one of Barry's great mates and teammates and a, a genuine fantastic guy. I'd like to put your hands together for Gary Baker. Thanks, Sean. 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 Talk about pranksters, there's no bigger prankster than Sean. I know that. Um, it must be uh, everyone that's, uh, I don't know who's coming up after me, Stewie, I think. Um, uh, Mark, is it Mark Browning's coming up? I think Mark's the only one that didn't get the arse from about three clubs, I think, because you did, I did, and Stewie got the arse three times from the one club, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Roundy. Um, we had a great affiliation, Randy and I. I, I walked into the Footscray Footy Club in 1971 as a ruckman. And uh, when I walked in, uh, I obviously got recruited uh, in the old zoning days. Back in those days, I walked in and there was a list of about 50 players uh, back in those times. And I think uh, 37 of them were six foot five and over, you know. That's how it was back in those days. It was funny being a ruckman um, in the obviously in the 60s and 70s because now they're saying that you know they don't have one ruckman in a in a team today and if you've got another one you're pretty lucky but back when I started you had four ruckmen so you had two ruckmen started on the ground at the one time with a sentiment and a rover you had another ruckman in the back pocket that changed with one other ruckman and the other one in the forward pocket that changed with the other ruckman so when I walked in, you know, there was Roundy, there was Dempsey, there was Quinlan, there was Salmon, there was Keese, there was uh, Ruckman everywhere. And I remember playing a game with Roundy, the first game I played, and we're in the seconds. And I know that's probably very surprising to everyone here, that I was in the seconds. <laughs> but I was. And Roundy and I, Randy took me under his wing. It was my first game. And he said, I had two nicknames. I had Bull from... But at Futschka I had this nickname called Mushy. And uh, the reason I got Mushy is because Stephen Power, Gordon Casey, Harry Fry, who ended up being a cricketer, and this has got nothing to do with Roundy, we went out one night and um, we went to Tottenham Hotel, which was obviously in Footscray's area there. We got onto these girls, believe it or not. There's times have change now. You don't always get onto girls nowadays. <laughs> Do you, Val? <laughs> they have, mate. And anyway, we got back there and the pubs used to shut at 10 o'clock. And um, these girls lived in Braybrook, in Ballarat Road, Braybrook. Well, actually, one of them did and lived with uh, their parents. So we had to sort of creep in on the shag pole carpet because we didn't want to wake up mum and dad. And we were all a bit hungry at the time, and so we've opened up the uh, pantry. There's a tin of Edgel's mushrooms sitting on the shelf. One of the girls said to me, she said, what do you want to eat? And I said, I want mushies on toast. So the next day my name was Mushy from then on. And any time I hear the name Mushy, I know it's from the Footscray Footy Club. <laughs> but anyway, this day that Roundy, I'm playing footy with Roundy, and I thought he was looking after me because he said, Mush, he said, I'm gonna look after you at your first game. He said, you just sit back and watch me. He said, I'll knock out the big ruckman and I'll take them all aside and all that sort of stuff. And you just, you know, wind yourself into this game of VFL as it was then. And it took me about two games to realise and I worked it out and I used that in my experience years later. When he got a senior game and I was in the seconds for the next eight weeks, because <laughs> he didn't want me to do any work because he didn't want me to get a game in the seniors. <laughs> And that's how it was then, but Bazza was, um, um, he was a great mate of mine. We fought for the same position. 
I ended up leaving going to Melbourne. He ended up leaving going to um, the Swans, as we know. But what a remarkable story. I come from a little place called Lean Gapper. Uh, Barry come from Warrigal. And his great mate Bernie Quinlan come from Terrelgan. And they got recruited about the same time, probably in about 1969, went to Footscray at the same time, from a town that was about 20 minutes apart. Um, played their 300th on a similar sort of week. Both changed clubs and then won the Brownlow, tied for the Brownlow in the same year, which was um, pretty remarkable to have a mate that you go play junior footy with go to the VFL at the same time, play your 300 games each, and then share a brown layer. What a remarkable feat. And it's just such a shame that Bernie wasn't here today. Um, apparently he's come down with COVID. He's actually supposed to be where I am now. But uh, Bernie's a great mate, a great foot spot. And when I walked into Footscray, the memories that I've got of, of Round and Quinlan and Dempsey and Salmon and Stewie McGee and Gordon Casey and Stephen Power, they still give me goosebumps uh, to this day, just the memories I've got of those guys. But the remarkable thing is that for 10 years then I played against Barry and what a great player he was to play against. And I don't mean a great player and an easy player, you just have to look at the footage of him up there now. Um, and, and, and footy was different then because what us big blokes used to do is we judge everyone on how they played by how many marks they took. So we'd all be going out there trying to take 10 and 12 and 14 marks and 16 marks. And I remember a few years ago I saw that there was a guy called Clark I think played for Adelaide. And I remember thinking I took more marks in one game than he took for a whole year once. And that's how it is today. But we used to go out there and just take mark after mark and try and beat one another. And they actually had the stats in the paper in the Herald Sun. Rob Nicholson, who I saw over there, old Nico, he used to put the stats in the sun every Monday morning. And you'd just look, look up to see who you were in front of taking marks. And you could rest assured, Roundy was always up the top. Because he was never happy unless he took a dozen or 15 marks. Uh, that's not taken away from what he used to do off the field. And I'm sure Sean, and he told me, because one of Sean's great mates, Mike Brady, is here today. And Sean's going to get up with Mike and sing The Gambler just on behalf of, <laughs> of the great Barry Round, eh, Sean? And if he can't, if he doesn't know the words of that, he'll do. I wrote a letter to the postman, mate. <laughs> Just swing those hips just once, mate, just once. Come on. Later. Later. Yeah. Anyway, playing footy with um, all against Roundy after playing a couple of years with him. Uh, when I was at Melbourne, he was with the Swans. We had some great battles. But then uh, I ended up, believe it or not, getting the arse again from Melbourne and uh, ended up up in Sydney. Um, with a lot of these blokes that I haven't seen for 40 years, Blossom and, and anyway, all those guys that, you know, who you are here, uh, Basil and I miss Jared. I put Jared on on um, on the road to stardom, but he, he sort of went up after me, didn't you, Jared? I give him all his media bloody um, tips and all that sort of stuff. Now he doesn't even bloody talk to me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, up there in Sydney, and uh, what, what a, a time that was up there. Um, I talked to Scotty and a few of the boys before that how tough it was for the Swans when, it, when, when uh, the Swans went up there. And obviously, you know, there were two groups, and one down here and one up there and all that. But at the forefront of the main group was Big Baz, the big digger, as we used to call him, because when we first um, uh, started playing footy with him, he was actually doing Nasho. And uh, his nickname at Footscray in those early days was Digger. And uh, anyway, up there in Sydney, and I never forget before I uh, before I get off and hand back over to Shane or Sean, as we call him, we went on a trip to Thailand, and we used to do a, a little bit of drinking back in those days. And um, we had this training run on the beach, on this little beach 
in Thailand it was uh, P Pattaya Beach it was. I don't know why we went to Pattaya Beach, but we did go there. If Don Brown Sheepshead's here, you can tell us what Pattaya Beach is like, because I think he's been there a few times in the last month. <laughs> At any rate, we had this training run at six o'clock in the morning and we're meeting on the, on the end of this beach and we're going to do a, you know, a half hour run and everyone was there except Roundy and you can see up the other end of the beach there's this, um, this bar, this beach bar and there was about three blokes, well we thought there was three blokes on a table up at this beach bar so I went up to see the three blokes where there was only one, it was Roundy, he was that bloody big. Anyway, he'd been there since eight o'clock the night before. <laughs> and I went up to him and I said, Digger, I said, mate, you know about the Buddy Beach run and you know the fines and all that sort of stuff if, uh, if you don't do the beach run. So get up here and do the beach run. Well, he was absolutely, like, honestly, 14 hours on the juice. But you know what he's like, mate. There was 50 players. He ran third in the beach run and then sat back down the same table and, <laughs> and another good old crack. Rest in peace, Bazaar.